Now, what is the model court all about? You're, gonna, you're in it now, so you'll know. It's a group of family and juvenile courts. See, in some states, they call the what we do a family court. You need to know. When you cross the state lines, the words change. Um, started in 1990s after the uh, publication of the resource guidelines, supported by OJ. Now there are 30 courts, over to about 35. And um, we use the resource guidelines as a guide, but most of the time, what we do is we meet in a group, large group, and we talk about what we're doing, our best practices, and then we steal ideas from each other. <laughs> we take them home to our own court, we adopt them, and we give absolutely no attribution. <laughs> we invented it, it's our good idea, and everybody thinks, my gosh, those people in juvenile court are really hot, aren't they? <laughs> So here are some of the ideas that are up on the wall. Here are the really sort of fundamental things that you do in model courts. One judge, one family. The family you see on day one is the family that you return the child to or you adopt the child to somebody else. They see you every time from start to finish. Fundamental point. Number two, more substantive, meaning longer preliminary hearings. And I'll say more about that later. There are several models out there, including the second shelter care hearing down in Portland or um, more later. Time certain hearings, you do some of that. No continuance policies, that is aspirational. Nobody does that. <laughs> However, cutting it down from 50% to 5% is something important, and you can do that. You just got to think about it. Dissemination of court orders at the conclusion of the hearing. The parent walks out with the order in the hand. Okay? Setting the next hearing. So the next hearing is set from the bench. I never understood that, but until I went to a court where they were saying, we'll tell you when the next court date is, they would send it out in the mail. Sounded crazy. You don't do that here, so. Um, okay, here's some more things. Dedicated attorneys to one courtroom. Okay? That way you don't have the problem of, oh, judge, I'm over in another courtroom. I can't go. Uh, improved advocacy for children and representation for parents. Upgrading both of those. Which means, in my way of thinking, every child has an attorney and or a GAO. From the way go, start, just do it. And that's, that's just a national best practice. Um, representation for parents, both parents, Every case, unless they say no, they don't have to ask for it, they get it. And that's, that's my approach. If they don't want it, then we'll back off. Development of data information system, that's a tough one, but everybody got money this year to get going on that um, so you can answer questions. Frankly, how can you go to the legislature, as you're going to do, and ask them for more judges, better attorney salaries and things like that, more attorneys, unless you can tell them how many children are in care, how many children each judge has, how many children each attorney has, how many families or parents each attorney has, and then show why you are out of step with the rest of the country. Uh, unless you can show them rigorous numbers, you're not going to make any progress in the legislature because they count beans, and they should count beans. And we need to do that in the court system now, much more effectively than we have. Get the faith community involved, development ADR, lots more on that coming up, and front-loading the dependency system, more on that coming up. Okay, these are national trends that most of the model courts have been picking up and running with. Mediation, I'll show you a film on that. Uh, family finding, wraparound services, uh, family to family, uh, joint response, family drug treatment courts, visitation, big issue, national issue, that the model courts embraced. And visitation is an issue you need to pay careful attention to. Because if you're, and the developmental needs of children, and this once a week, for everybody, forget it. That's not what it's about. It's about meeting the needs of the child and the parent during the recovery or reunification period. 
and confidentiality and public access, I'm glad to hear that you have open courts in the sense that people can walk in. I could walk in yesterday and I didn't have to sign a statement that I'll never speak to anyone about what I saw, which I do in some states around the country. So you, you're ahead of us there. I can't get the uh, people of California to open up the courts. I did it as a judge because I have that power, but I can't get other judges to do it. And the media, oh, the media loves this issue now. We got newspaper, we got books, brand new book, Hope's Child, just came out this month, Hope's Child. It's about a, the life of a foster child who just uh, graduated from Harvard Law School and is on, on a roll. You ought to have him up here, Andy Briggs. He's, he's wonderful. We had him at our conference last week. And how many of you have seen uh, Antoine Fisher? That's all? Oh, well, shame on you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you're working in child welfare and you haven't seen Antoine Fisher, then you're not as inspired as you could be. And I'm not selling you a half-baked movie. This is Denzel Washington. <laughs> okay? Okay? This is, this is for real. This is the best. They've got a, an award a, you know, from the Hollywood people. And this is about, this is about family, family finding. So that, that's okay. Write it down. It's, a, it's in your thing. Antoine Fisher, it was, the, the book was called Finding Fish. The movie was called Antoine Fisher. So you can get it. I bought 50 copies off used, and I would give it out to foster children in court, particularly the teenagers aging out. I'd say, you keep this movie. You may not have your mom. You may not have your dad. You may not know what family you've got but I guarantee they're there somewhere. Huh. There's litigation. Utah just had its case dismissed. Washington, D.C. has been in litigation since the 70s. I went back there and met with the federal monitor. They say they're going to dismiss their case in a couple of weeks or months. You've got your own case, the uh, foster care system in, is uh, in, in federal court in Washington, has been for several years. National Center for Youth Law is doing it. Federal litigation, I don't think it's as effective as some other ways of doing things. I'd rather build from the inside, but there it is. Um, the federal 4E and 4B, this is a different kind of test of your um, performance. And the federal people come in. Remember, 4E money is the money that flows through the state and goes into foster care. 4B money goes to the Department for Preventive Services and a num number of other things. Well, the federal government doesn't just give you this money and say, here, free money. They expect you to do things with it, so they come in and audit your books. And your books, it turns out, are court files. And they see whether the court has written down the right words and made the right findings. We'll get back to that in a minute. And we got hit for $54 million in 1988. That's when I learned about reasonable efforts. <laughs> OK. I think your next CFSR is in 2009. I couldn't get a straight answer from the people in Washington on this. but. I, I actually was a reviewer. You, you ought to volunteer to be a reviewer. I was a reviewer in Los Angeles uh, two months ago in February for our CFSR. It's very interesting. It will teach you a great deal about how the federal government expects your state to perform at the child welfare level, all the way from how you respond to a hotline call all the way to timely permanency adoptions and support after adoption. Okay, now I pulled these out of some materials I read. I actually prepared for this by reading about Washington, and these are some of the issues that have been identified in your CFSRs. Um, accessibility and availability of mental health services, increasing court capacity and representation for more timely permanency for children, quantity of visitation, face-to-face -face time between social workers, children and social workers and families. Those are pulled right out of reports from the federal government on what you aren't doing well. 
Now, I, I could have written four others that you are doing well in, so bravo for that. But let's work on our um, weaknesses. And uh, that's the possible penalty for you. And you've had, um, you've had some good legislation. I've been following your kinship legislation. You started out with about 21%, or 18%, pardon me, 18% of children placed with kin. And that's like, say, five, six years ago. You had your kinship legislation went through, and two years later, the state reported you were 35%. You almost doubled it in two years. That's incredible. Now, 35% is still not where you could be, but you did a good job. And your kinship legislation, you've got to keep working on that. Um, okay, here's what I did in 88. I went to the director of social services. Now, that's not your job. No, that's your regional center, right? Yes. All right. I went to the uh, director of social services, and I said, look, the judges don't know how to write the right orders. How about paying for attorneys for the AOC to go out and train judges all around the state in making the right orders. And she said, done. And we've been in the budget for the Department of Children's Services for f almost 20 years just to train our judges courtroom by courtroom around the state by attorneys out of the AOC. Not a bad idea. It's a the d department probably saved millions of dollars, and they only spent a couple of hundred thousand a year on those attorneys. Well, the um, California has more appellate cases in the involving the Indian Child Welfare Act than every other state put together. We have so much appellate law, independency law, and a great deal of it is devoted to the Indian Child Welfare Act, and it has to do with the proper notice. I borrow from Washington all the time on your protocols of working with tribes and the relationship between tribal courts and uh, local superior courts. So I thank you for that. You guys are, you guys are the experts. We, uh, this is what we've had to do in order to train everybody in California. We do, we do a lot of work on Indian Child Welfare Act. We have more Native Americans in our state than any other state because we're big. But we only have a few tribal courts. We only have a couple of uh, federally recognized tribes. 